While you sort out your 2022 budget, think about this. You can save 72% on restaurant-quality meals with HelloFresh. And you don't even need to hit the grocery store. Get 16 free meals plus three gifts with code FACE16 at HelloFresh.com slash FACE16. Hello and welcome to another episode of the F*** Face Podcast. This is the 88th iteration of this podcast. Uh, with me as always, my name is Jeff, and then uh, with me, uh, Gavin and Andrew. Uh, take it away, boys. Jeff, you sound I'm- like you're in a really good mood. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. How are you? Good. I'm disappointed. So I am. Oh no! I'm disappointed in Gavin. What? I'm very disappointed in you. What do you mean? You remain unpleasant. You are just as unpleasant as you were the previous week. Zero pleasantries for Gavin. Because I showed up at one o'clock and you we started showed with up it? at one once again. <laughs> we had this whole thing. I thought you bought in. I thought you're going to be a pleasant guy going forward. Your mood would be better. <laughs> Still just as unpleasant. I'll be honest, I completely forgot about the pleasantries. Oh, of course you did. You don't value the pleasantries. This is well established. We have so many pleasantries outside of <laughs> There's Discord. not pleasantries. That doesn't count. We have zero <sighs> pleasantry scenarios outside of... There's one other thing. That okay, we I think for maybe, maybe for episode 90, I'll attend the pleasantries. That you can't. What Why? episode is this? Wait, wait, what episode? This is 88. 88. I thought you were doing, I thought you were doing a sneaky thing. I thought we're doing 89 and we're doing two today. And you're like, I'll be there before the start of the 90th one. <laughs> you're already here. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to hold you to that. Pleasant Gavin episode 90. Why don't you give me a, a brief summary of today's pleasantries and what was covered and what I missed? Okay. Uh, we were talking about arena names, our favorite sports arena names. I guess it doesn't have to be a sports arena, although most arenas are for sports. Uh, we're discussing that. All sorts of great names. Do you have a favorite arena name, either of you? Well, I feel a little on the spot right now, honestly. Uh, haven't had time <laughs> to think about all my uh, all of the different arena names around the world. Gavin, you go. I don't know a lot of arena names. I, I know the ones that they uh, made fun of in basketball, like uh, Maxi Tampon Stadium or whatever, but they were all just funny jokes. What, what are some of the real ones? Are they funny jokes? Because that's how arenas are named. Like I know that that's probably a joke, but it also is just sort of how they are. Yeah. My personal one was uh, the KFC Yum Center. I love hearing about the <laughs> KFC Yum Center in Kentucky. It'd be like when you watch a UFC event, they'll be like, UFC 76 at the Yum Center. <laughs> Two heavyweights going at it. Like, this is such a. Uh, Eric had a great one for, I don't remember what city it was for. Is New Orleans, and they have the Smoothie King Arena or the Smoothie King Center. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I have one. Uh, the Boca Raton Bowl is the roofclaim.com Boca Raton Bowl, <laughs> which I think is because uh, so many roofs blow off in uh, <laughs> in hur- hurricanes in Florida uh, that they <laughs> that it's such a big industry that the roof company, uh, the roof insurance company, sponsored an entire bowl. Wow, Henry's really hitting it hard today. Straight yeah, off the... He, uh, he has off the it's a defiant thing. So the other day I was doing a different podcast. I think I was doing the uh, RT podcast from home and uh, he started up and I had to take the, I, 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 it's not that podcast. They wouldn't get it, you know? So I had to take the, uh. the football away from him. And so I, th- he was pissed off. He has more creative <laughs> freedom while he's, uh, yeah, while he's on for like, <laughs> for like a day. And so I think that he's being defiant, but also he's like checking like, wait a minute. I thought the rule was, I start squeaking when we're doing the podcast, and then I, I don't think he understands the subtleties between like different podcasts. And so he's kind of looking at me right now with the football in his mouth, going like, "Am I doing this or not? Like, what's what?" what, what? <laughs> he has his role. Yeah, exactly. But there's no nuance to it. That's the problem. Maybe that will be season by season six. Maybe he'll have a variation of the squeak. It won't be constant. Well, how much money does it take to get your name on a stadium? Like, what's the shittiest, cheapest stadium you could get your name on? Oh, maybe the Boca Raton Bowl. <laughs> what, well, what, <laughs> well, how many how many seats is a stadium? What's the smallest stadium I could have? I certainly couldn't call a six chair building an arena. Well, smallest stadium. 
Is it a capacity thing or is it just like a, a specific facility within the stadium that classifies it as a stadium? I don't know what defines a stadium. Does That's it need great... like eight food courts and then it's a stadium? <laughs> It needs to serve at least three different variations of hot dogs, and then it becomes a stadium. We should look up the requirements, because we could potentially build a very small f face stadium. We, we could. I can't get the link to work, but uh, according to Google, Eden Park in New Zealand is widely considered as the smallest international cricket stadium in the world, but I don't know what the fucking... There oh, Eric says a stadium is a place or venue, outdoor sports, concerts, other events, consists of a field or stage, either partly or completely surrounded by a tiered structure. So it just needs so tiered seats. Yeah. Yeah, we could absolutely make a stadium. Huh. Yeah, because this one, this cricket stadium has a capacity of 15,000 people. I feel like we could come in way smaller than that. 15? Yeah, 15 people. <laughs> Before we get away from the names, Nick said his favorite name was the Chick fil A stadium or something like that in Atlanta. Is that where the Falcons play? Does that still exist? Uh, well, the Falcons play in Atlanta. I know they play in Atlanta. I, I knew that part. I didn't know what their. So did Kanye West live in a Chick-fil-A, technically, for a while? Did he live in the stadium? Kanye West moved into the Falcon Stadium for a little bit. He went through this whole thing where he's living in stadiums. They eventually kicked him out. Is that when he was doing his, like, his, like, Sunday service thing? No, I think, like, it was more recent than that. Oh. I assume more people were aware of Kanye West stadium habits. Well, like what kind of room one. did he have? Did he have, like, one of the... I don't... It's a great question. He moved stadiums, though, because I, I feel like... <laughs> the playoffs were starting in the NFL or something. They're like, you can't still be here. You got to go. I think he was, was getting too on... loud. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it may have been the Sunday service stuff. It was recent. It was like within the last three or four months. Huh. And I don't remember where he moved. I think he moved to New Orleans. He may have went from Chick-fil-A to a Smoothie King, potentially. <laughs> Do you think that's a step up or a step down or a lateral move going from a Chick-fil-A to a Smoothie uh, King? I haven't had either, but I feel like there's a Chick-fil-A is, is a more... I don't know. It, uh, like has, this, more? has a company ever sponsored the name of a stadium and then not provided the catering for the stadium? Like, oh, is I there a Chick-fil-A stadium that doesn't serve Chick-fil-A? I would be shocked if the Chick-fil-A stadium serves Chick-fil-A. It's certainly not on a Sunday stunning. when they play football, right? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the point of Chick-fil-A? I guess. Yeah, they're closed on Sundays. I, I, are they? I've never been. I've never, I don't have any. You've never eaten a Chick-fil-A in your life? No, I don't have any around here. They it's got not a good chicken nuggets, man. Do they? Oh yeah. What about, compared to like McDonald's nuggets, where would you? How do you how do you rank them? Uh, how do I rank Chick Fil A nuggets? Yes. Amongst other fast food nuggets? Yes. I think they're better than all the other fast food nuggets combined. Oh wow. Yeah, they're wow. like it's like a different <laughs> it's like a different <laughs> level. That's such a weird phrase. I like the idea of all the other fast food nuggets forming into a Voltron like. Yeah, and it would not be that, that Voltron it, nug would not <laughs> compare. Yeah, is a nugget only good because of the ratio of the fried part to the inter like if you had a big nugget steak, would it be less delicious? <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I, I That's a chicken fried steak, right? Isn't isn't a chicken fried steak just a big chicken nugget? Oh, is that what that is? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> What do you? Th I think the most important part of the chicken nugget is the crunch for me. It's just, it's really the coating, the breading. Mm. I want a nice crunch. I will say the, I, I agree when it comes to like McDonald's and those, like the, you're, you're in it for the breading, right? But with Chick-fil-A, it's good all the way through, I will say. Does any nugget have the fried pot on the inside? Oh, like, ooh, ooh like an inverted nugget. Yeah. Is there an inver, <laughs> how would you do that? Uh... <laughs> I'm sure that's doable. You'd have to just, you start with, ooh, what if you started with a tiny nug, right? Okay. Wrap, wrap that in chicken, nugged it again, and just keep doing it until it's like a nug sphere. Do you, <laughs> I feel like if I were to show you that product that you just created, you would be annoyed by it. You would hate it. <laughs> the thing you just invented in your head. You would, if I showed you a photo, you'd be like, who has the fucking time to do that? Get yeah. out of here. You would hate it. I love that you just invented that. I think I would say you, Andrew, are quite an expert in fast food because you've, you know, you've got the sauce empire. I do. I think you could craft a really interesting, unique fast food menu item. I need to think about that. You, you're right. I think I could do something in the space. I'm currently, I'm, I feel like I'm taking down McDonald's right now. I learned a secret. <laughs> 
has changed my life. My McDonald's order. Are you going to reveal the secret? Because you are going to not reveal it. I, I'm on the fence. I'm on the fence about revealing it because it's so good. It's changed. It's changed my whole ordering process. You wouldn't even tell me about it. Why wouldn't you want to share it? Why Why would you want to hold on to this information? Because what if they, because it's, they're, they're making a mistake, Jeff. The oh people, boy. the McDonald's is making a mistake. I don't know if it's local to my specific McDonald's. I have a feeling it's not. Are you worried it's going to be patched? <laughs> I'm afraid that someone's going to go tell McDonald's what they're doing and it's going to get patched. And there's a whole other layer that I haven't, I haven't talked to. You, you knew that I had a, a new trick, Gavin. You don't even know the side benefit of what I'm getting. I'll say Ooh. it. I'll fucking say it because everyone I've told didn't know this was a thing. McDonald's has a pancake Happy Meal. They have a hot cake Happy Meal for the morning. But you get two. At least on all the promotional images, that's what makes it like the kids' meal version of the hotcakes. You just order hotcakes, you get three. If you order the kids' hotcakes, you're supposed to get two. But they don't know this. I just get three. So I order the kids' hotcakes, which comes with a drink, comes with a hash brown, which is $2. And what should be two pancakes, for, I get three. So for the price of essentially one order of hotcakes, I'm now also getting a drink and a hash brown. And a toy. How are you getting three? You're ordering three. I'm ordering two, but they just give three because I don't think anyone actually knows what, like, people don't seem to be aware that there is a, a hot cakes happy meal and nobody knows what it is. So they give three. They just give a standard order of hot cakes. They're only supposed to give two. So your secret to your secret uh, cheat is you order the hot cakes happy meal and that's all you do. Well, yeah, because they give three. They give three hot cakes instead of two. <sighs> And they give you a toy, and you get a drink, and you get a hash. If I were to just order, if I didn't order this in Happy Meal, right? Like, I was just ordering all the items of it. The hotcakes, the three hotcakes is like $4.80. The hash brown is $2. The drink is like another dollar. I, this is like an $8 meal I'm getting for $5, plus I get a toy. Uh, what's the it's toy? It's changed my mornings. That's a, a fantastic question, Jeff. What is the toy? Now, originally... <laughs> Right now, they're doing Sing 2 Toys is their main thing. Who, who wants that? They're not great. They're not great toys. But two times ago, I opened up my box, and I got a fucking Beanie Baby. I got a Beanie Baby. How exciting is that? A whole Beanie Baby? I got a whole Beanie Baby. It was the greatest morning I've had in quite a while. It lifted my spirits. I was excited about it. Then I realized the Beanie Baby was from 2019. That Beanie Baby's just been hanging out in that McDonald's <laughs> since, tw since before the pandemic started. The world has changed since that Beanie Baby was delivered. Do you think it's even a McDonald's Beanie Baby, or do you think they're at a point now where employees are just trying to get rid of shit they don't want in their house anymore? <laughs> I like your idea, but I think it's a McDonald's Beanie Baby. And I'll say, I'll say why, because I think they're out oh of God. Sing 2 stuff, and so they're just giving away what they currently have. So I ordered a Happy Meal this morning. I got fucking Pokemon cards. Ooh. Pokemon cards. A lot of people eat those now, right? I've been hearing that. <laughs> I just can't imagine anything better at sucking up the fast food smell than the material used in a Beanie Baby. That thing must smell terrible. Nah, it's, listen, it's in a bag. It's got a... It's you think got the bag a, keeps all the, <laughs> the oil stink I mean, out? Listen, I was going to say, it's, got a, it's in a bag. It's got a beak. Like, the beak would be... <laughs> the so if we're going to talk about things that would penetrate... The bag is the better option of the two. What is the Beanie Baby? Uh, it's uh, it's Gilda the Flamingo. Hmm. Birthday, February 26, 2017. Gilda the Flamingo. I, I gotta admit, I'm slightly let down by your... Get McDonald's the fuck hat. out of here. Get out of here. I thought I was picturing Get you... Get out like, of on, here. I, I was picturing you like on the kiosk being like, a, like ordering on the screen, being like, well, if you add this and then... Uh, subtract this and you'd order this without the thing and then it comes and you get really you're just ordering an item from the menu That's I it. have I have noticed a hole in their system. I've noticed a mistake It's a I've hole done they the give to everyone and don't care about clearly. No, they cle I, I think listen Why oh, would Eric they offer started shit? Eric said I think your hack is good. Go no, how? it's a great hack because I'm the saying hack? The hat, Gavin, is you get, for the price of three hotcakes, you're not just getting a hotcake. I don't know how many times I have to say it. You're getting a hash brown, you're getting a drink, a delicious fucking apple juice, or a chocolate milk, or an orange juice. Your choice. You can make but it's the, on the It's just sat on the menu. But it's at a cheaper price. It's I like don't half the price. <laughs>
What do you want? What do you fucking- what did you expect me to say? I ordered three Big Macs and a fucking Sprite and it turns out they deliver a Porsche. Like, what do you want me to say? <laughs> What's the hack? Well, I think that the- I think the hack, if you will, comes down to your local McDonald's doesn't know what they're doing. That's what I don't know. That's the possibility. Like, can you try a different McDonald's? Because I looked That's, it up on their website and it shows, it even says get two hotcakes with your choice of apples, hash brown, yogurt, or a drink. Thank so they're you, advertising it as two on the McDonald's website. So I don't know that it's a hack as much as, as you just have a McDonald's that is playing fast and loose with the rules. The hack is that I don't think any McDonald's knows that they're only supposed to give two. You don't think any McDonald's in on Earth knows, even though the website knows, <laughs> I, all the marketing no, materials I think know. The vast majority. You think of that the mistake that your local McDonald's is making is global? Well, this is a perfect thing to talk about on a podcast. We we got plenty of opportunities for field research. I want to know <laughs> people who order Happy Meals get the hotcakes Happy Meal. Let me know how many hotcakes you get. I, yeah, get it if you if it's it, through the course of something you already do. Don't go out and buy a hotcakes Happy Meal. Just to, to give the McDonald's Corporation money just for Andrew. It's probably some secret, like, you got some sort of a secret deal on the back end here where you're selling no. McDonald's hot pancakes? No, absolutely. I, no, I don't have, I don't own any stocks in the McDonald's company. I'm not an investor. I get no benefit from this. I did the stock market thing once and it didn't work the way I hoped it would. And I lost money. <laughs> I bought Pizza Hut. It was, <laughs> it was during the pandemic. I bought... <laughs> <laughs> it's so stupid. I if I bought Pizza Hut, which is Yum stock, which is Pizza Hut. I bought a single share of Yum, my favorite <laughs> arena, uh, which is Taco Bell, KFC, and Pizza Hut. And I was like, I think they're gonna. I think it's gonna go up today. I think today's a good. I think people are gonna get lunch from them today. Mm -hmm. And then I sold. As soon as I bought it, it tanked. It went down. Then it went back to where I bought it after maybe two hours, and then I sold, and I lost money on the transactional fees of the process. Hard to be a day trader. It is. I got out of the game. So I don't know any McDonald's stocks. I have no incentive to do so. I'd just be curious. Because you're right. I don't know. That is, that is the argument. Unlike fucking Gavin's dumb argument of it not being a hack in any way, expecting a fucking <laughs> rainbow of gold to appear if you order you, six <laughs> things in a certain you, way. I, uh, Someone's going to be on my side about this. No, no, I hear what you're saying. I have the reverse of that where Ooh, I can't order. Nick. Yes, Nick. What is, what is Nick? I'm on your Ed side, Nick. Gavin. Yeah, I thought, I thought it was pretty clear that Jeff was on your side. I'm I right didn't... there with you. <laughs> Wait. Oh. This is a minor. I thought Jeff was with me. Why was I with you? Yeah, I thought what? Jeff was with you. What? <laughs> I thought you were. <laughs> you seem more supportive. You're counter argument. You're supportive of the hack. Yeah, I thought you were no, like, I'm I, I don't I'm have saying that I don't think it's a hack. I'm saying I think that your McDonald's doesn't know what the fuck they're doing. That's possible. Okay, well. How did you get anything other than that out of what I said? Eric, I just didn't hear you up. Dis I didn't hear you dismiss no. it as a I, hack. I, I just, I immediately, it was Jeff going, well, it sounds like your McDonald's just doesn't understand or did something. Okay. Like, th this is You're right. This isn't, I mean, I, it was him saying it's not a hack without saying oh, okay. those words. And, and I also yeah. said, like, th th this would mean that every McDonald's on the globe is doing it wrong, and I don't think that's the case. And then Andrew that's was like, fair. this is my backdoor opportunity to sell some fucking hotcakes, and, you know, I no. get, I'm sure you get some sort of a vig on the back nope. end from McDonald's. Nope. It was just, a, you're it was, you did it politely, Jeff. All right, I apologize. I, I misunderstood the support. You broke my heart softly with it. Where Gavin was just like, this isn't... I just don't. I, sometimes... I thought, I, Jeff, you were like, this could be a good hack, but I, it's not a hack because now, of this. So it like, raises this the possible. question that I ask myself all the time, which is, it, why do I talk? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> just, just generally? Like, uh, there's like a 40% chance Gavin's listening <laughs> oh, to anything I say. <laughs> oh, what do you and mean? I would give Andrew like a 70%. But even if I, if you guys are listening and, and everything I say is misconstrued anyway, then just what's the point? I, I, I might as well just sit back and enjoy the podcast. I, it's, I feel the same way a lot of the time. Not necessarily the no, same. No, you percentages. can't. You can't feel the same way. I already feel that way. That's why you can't no. steal my feelings. No, I'm stealing your feelings. I feel that you way. You can't too. be a feeling appropriator. How dare you? <laughs> I'm stealing your feelings. They're mine. This is my insight. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, yeah. Gavin? What about me? Well, what do you mean? Uh, what do you mean? <laughs> In reference to, I just what stole Jeff's me? feelings. What about me? Kevin, why are you in a bad mood today? <laughs> He's always in a bad mood. No! <laughs> I would say 
Uh, yeah, I, I do try and listen. I was just. I think I was still Would just you thinking. Feel- I was still just thinking about how it's so easy to hack McDonald's because they have those screens where you can like deduct and add different things to different foods, and sometimes you end up with like a negative balance. I, I thought you'd no, done something got, like that. I got that, but the other way, they're fucking me on the sausage. It dr- it's <gasps> upsetting to me. What? I can't. I can't just order. I like a side of sausage with the hotcakes. Right, it's a thing I enjoy. I can't. But there's no ability for me to order just a side of sausage through the app. Oh, it has to come in an English muffin. Is the best I can do to get it. But you don't want the bread part. It's cheese in the bread part, and I in that screen I can add an additional sausage for a dollar twenty-five. So I know how much it costs to order one, and I can do it. But I need the bread part. So if I wanted two, just sausages. I'd have to order <laughs> one hot cake or not hot cake, the English muffin and then an additional. But the math doesn't even work out because you can also order a piece of cheese <laughs> and an English muffin and it costs more to do that than it would. It, none of it makes sense. It's chaos. What is your goal? Is your goal to save money mainly or is your goal to get one over on McDonald's? Well, it's started to save money and it ended up being I'm getting one over on McDonald's because I'm paying I'm paying way less than I should be. For what I'm getting. So it's a double win. Imagine the joy, Gavin, of thinking you're getting two hotcakes and you get three. And then thinking it's a mistake that would happen once and it's happened every time. Nick asked how many times I've done it. I've done it about four or five times at this point. I always And it's hundred percent consistency with your hack. A hundred percent consistency. And the toy is changing every time. I don't even know it's gonna be in that box. It's a mystery box every morning that I do. I this. thought they did away with toys. No, those. you can get a book too, but like, why would I? Who f- fucking a book? Yeah, who can who read? That? Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. I don't even know why I speak. I completely regret oh. learning how to read. Ay, ay, ay. Well, congratulations on your hot cake hack. Thanks. I think it's great. That's it. That, that doesn't sound anything like a hack to me, but uh, <laughs> let me be clear. Don't think it's a hack. Okay. Well, if, if people order this that are pl- uh, based on your words. If people who are ordering hotcakes naturally decide to order the Happy Meal, at what percentage do those need to come back with three for you to accept this as a hack? Nick says once is a mistake, four or five times is a hack. I disagree. I four like or five flipped. times is just a pattern. It's just a pattern of uh, of uh, <laughs> miscommunication and poor workmanship. I think it's just an uneducated workforce that doesn't understand it? the rules. <laughs> I just feel like what time. <laughs> Okay. It's eleven twenty three your time. I'm blown away that you're not only fucking, okay. are you saying this is a hack. We're doing this. You're saying this is such a good hack no, that you didn't no, even no, want no, to discuss no. it publicly or tell me privately <laughs> while we were playing Halo. Because he's scared McDonald's will plug this hole. <laughs> wait, wait, wait a second. They're like somebody at corporate's like, what do you mean we're giving away an extra free <laughs> hotcake? That's, that's my fear. There's only two in the picture. They're gonna put a, a press release out that there <laughs> needs to only be two. Oh. It'll ruin everything. I put a lot on the line here, and I didn't expect any <laughs> shit on for it. God damn. A lot on the line? It's not even oh. a secret menu item. No. Well, it's a secret. You get three. If you would look at the fucking photo, you would not know you're getting three hotcakes. I just gave you a little McDonald's I'll be honest, secret. I don't cross-reference a lot of food I get with the picture. Yeah, I don't. I guess that's fair. I'm just saying if you saw it. I may have been hacking my entire life without knowing. I uh I will say that the McDonald's that I frequent kind of sim- but kind of close to my house uh they they've been going through some staffing problems which I, I think a lot of uh just a lot of establishments across the America have honestly uh but since then it's kind of a crapshoot what I get when I order something like they're they're very routinely do I order like a number one and end up with like somebody else's crispy chicken sandwich. Or an extra fry. I don't consider it a hack. I uh, I consider it as a mistake, and I feel like I feel like that's what you're dealing with here. I think uh, Nick made a great argument of if it's consistently the same thing. I think that's not a mistake. I see what you're saying. I think it's just misinformation. I think the only argument I will accept is if it's just my McDonald's failing at their job, then it's no longer a hack. That's that's like a, a shareable thing. Okay, that's really the the deciding factor for me. Well, Eric and, and Nick both think it's a hack now. Um, you know what? Hey, Gavin, you asked me what my cool fucking, my, my ridiculous <laughs> item would be. It's ordering two hotcakes and getting four. That's my fucking cool item. Because getting 
an ex unexpected amount of hotcakes. It's called the hacker meal, now, and you get four fucking hotcakes. If we're following six sock points. logic, is that one spare or two? Uh, that's one spare from a okay. standard hotcake order. Four, okay. yeah, you get one extra. Good. That's on us. <laughs> We mentioned a birthday during that, I, and I don't remember when or why someone's birthday was mentioned at some point. I feel like we need to call out that it was Don Zimmer's birthday a few days ago. Oh, yeah. Monday, it was Don Zimmer's birthday. Happy birthday to Don Zimmer. How old would he have been? Oh, that's a great question. No, I know it's, it's a great question, and I, I want it to be known that I fucking have learned from my... Uh, what was... Oh, fuck. Oh, what was her name? Oh, no. Oh, no. I haven't learned anything, apparently. Was it Leona Waddell? Was that her the name? The basket woman? The basket woman. Yeah. Yep. I had in my notes to, to bring up Zimmer's birthday happening, and I knew that there would be a follow-up question before that. I wasn't prepared last time. I believe Zimmer would be 92. Dang. Oh, man. We've got to do a, a blowout for his century. We do. We really should. We really should. 91? I was close. Do you guys think everybody uh, associated with this podcast will be alive in eight years? Ooh. Um, we could try. We could make a good effort. <laughs> I don't yeah. want to get in this round. Yeah. Well, I, I will certainly endeavor to be alive. <laughs> Eric said no, but he won't say who. I'm kind of, I'm kind of right there with you. Oh. If everybody fucking starts getting three hotcakes, you know who took me out. You know who came for me. <laughs> <laughs> Ronald McDonald is a menace. Is he still around, Ronald? No, he's gone. Oh. Like his caboose, it's been stolen. It's been taken. <laughs> he's no longer. They've gotten rid of all traces of Ronald McDonald. This is, I want to say I'm, I'm, I'm happy. That this episode, the last, so we have, we have uh, a, an intern listening to this episode that came with Eric. This has happened once before. Do you remember the last time this happened? That we had an intern listening as we recorded? Yes. Was it the, uh, I bet you do. I sure do. <laughs> was it the condiments? <laughs> it was the condiment episode. I feel like we have enough distance where we could talk about the condiments. <laughs> it was by far our condiment argument is not just within the context of the show, the most argumentative, heated, uncomfortable conversation I've ever had with Jeff, by far, in our friendship. I'd say as a whole, between all of us, it was the worst conversation we've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> and it was recorded. And as bad, I feel like it probably sounded bad in the edited release. It was oh, unbelievably worse in the moment. Here's the problem. When I get mad... Yeah. <laughs> so it was edited in such a way that didn't... <laughs> it was edited in such a way that I agree with, by the way, that I fully support, that took, <laughs> that took away a lot of my arguments that I think made my point. But unfortunately, I made them in such a mean way that it, they needed to be removed. I, I, <laughs> I, <laughs> I think you guys understand what I'm saying here, right? No, I... Yeah. Oh, yeah, I was there. I, I think I was right, but I was right in such a <laughs> such an such an angry angry way that, as Nick is saying, it took a lot of context away from me. Yeah, I uh, I, sh I really f faced myself in well, being uh, in proving my point in the moment, but proving it in such a cruel way that we had to cut it. I I feel like I don't, you definitely proved that condiments and what is the sauce and what is it is a fucking impossible. There's no good answer. There's gonna like there's I feel like it's ho so hard to to make a judgment. I would Fully. say it was more of a condiment hack. <laughs> <laughs> Nick said it, it took away con it absolutely took away context from Jeff. Uh, if I could have had you retake those lines, it would have worked. <laughs> I would love a, I would love a version where you're like really really agitated, but all the lines you ADR are like really upbeat and jolly yeah. and just cut in amongst the uh, the sour saltiness. <laughs> I was a whole thing where I didn't realize that you were. It was. Whatever. It was the worst thing, the worst conversation we've ever had. And it was recorded on a podcast and it was a weird argument. And it was in front of an intern. It was the only it's the closest yeah. thing we've had to a live audience that wasn't like regularly part of the show. And that was the only thing I assume they've heard for it's just the worst. You didn't realize I was angry because I was still making jokes because that's how I deal with everything is, is through, you know, anger, sadness, uh, whatever through comedy. But so I was still making jokes. They were <laughs> you, you were a furnace of rage and I didn't understand that. And I kept throwing coal in because I thought that we were doing a bit. Uh. We were no longer doing a bit. So it was equally my fault. You were throwing coal in and it was somehow coming out as gold, but like damaging the <laughs> furnace as it was happening.
Yeah, it was. It was. It, I I agree. It was gold. I feel like I was very funny in all that <laughs> shit that got cut. It's just unfortunately the audience can't hear it. But I was hilarious. I was making myself laugh as I was furious. Were you? Is it a type of thing that we could put out? Eventually, like uh, maybe on Don so. Zimmer's hundred birthday. I don't birthday. think so. That it was miserable. I want it. We're not. We're not going <laughs> to glorify. I that say recording. we do a vinyl release on the hundredth birthday of Don Zimmer. <laughs> <laughs> a vinyl of the most uncomfortable, <laughs> not at all fun. In yeah, eight in eight years, years Eric. <laughs> what you want to st- nine years? Nine. Yeah. What do you want to stop this podcast earlier than that, Eric? What what year? So what? We're doing the vinyl in eight years. Well, I think it's nine years because Zim is only 91. Okay. No, nine so years. One of, us, one of us will be dead also, apparently, by the time this releases. One of us will be gone, but we will get the vinyl a year later. Yeah. I mean, we don't need three of us to put out a vinyl. Well, that's a good question. <laughs> so I always assumed that when one of us dies, we'll stop the podcast because I wouldn't want to continue it without all of us. Uh-huh. But will we still continue to, to, to release posthumous merch? <laughs> like if one of us dies three years from now do we just show up can back we, on the scene in nine Nick, years can you, and say, <laughs> <laughs> Nick, can you please save can you put all of the edited out audio in its own folder and we'll release like posthumous <laughs> albums <laughs> none of it makes sense it's just all bad it's just all terrible uncomfortable pauses <laughs> it's just silence the sound we could call it the sound of silence i think it really annoys audio files if you say a vinyl. I think that's the incorrect terminology, isn't it? Put out a record. Put it out on vinyl? What's the correct? I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm <laughs> You can't buy vinyls, right? You buy records or you buy stuff on vinyl. Gavin has never wished that he didn't speak more. <laughs> I wish I'd never spoke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you tell us, expert. You're the one with all the records. Got a fair few. You got, you got, you got three of everything, right? <laughs> Remember how you roll? <laughs> got three insights. If you sell stuff online, you're definitely in the right business. More people are shopping online than ever. I spend 90% of my time shopping. uh, 90% 90 of the stuff I buy is online, Uh, whether it be baseball cards or clothes or candy. They've been buying a lot of candy online lately. That means a lot of orders are coming in and a lot of orders you'll need to ship out fast. That's why online sellers like you need ShipStation. No matter how much you sell, ShipStation makes it super easy to manage and ship all of your orders from all of your sales channels faster, cheaper, and more efficiently. They call that the uh, AFCE is the acronym, AFCE. It's uh, uh, all uh, faster, cheaper, efficient, the uh, AFCE. With ShipStation, you can import orders from any sales channel, ship with any care. Well, uh, a sales channel that you maintain, I would assume. I wouldn't think you'd have access to other people's sales channels for their businesses. Uh, you could ship with any carrier. You can access discounted shipping rates. Cha-ching. That's where the real savings are. You can automate just about any shipping task. You'll spend a lot less time on shipping and a lot more time growing your business. No matter where you're selling, Amazon, Etsy, your own website, I recommend that. ShipStation funnels all of your orders into one simple interface that you can manage from anywhere, even your cell phone. I wish we had solutions like ShipStation back in 2003 when we started Rooster Teeth and we were selling DVDs and t-shirts out of my spare bedroom and we were loading up the back of Bernie's truck and driving around to filling up mailboxes all over town uh, because we didn't. Ha- the technology didn't exist yet. We- if we'd have had a ShipStation... Honestly, if we'd have had ShipStation back then, who knows how much more successful Rooster Teeth could, have, could be today. Uh, we'll never know, unfortunately. Uh, but luckily, you won't be forced to make the same uh, inefficient mistakes that we did because you have ShipStation available to you. You'll even get access to amazing discounts with other major carriers. I, I, I cha-ching this earlier. UPS, FedEx, UPS, etc. You'll easily be able to compare carriers and choose which solution is best for you every time. It's no wonder ShipStation has more five-star reviews than any other shipping software. Ship more in less time. Just use my offer code FACE to get a 60-day free trial. That's two months free of no-hassle, stress-free shipping. Just go to ShipStation.com, click on the microphone at the top of the page, and type in FACE. That's ShipStation.com, enter offer code FACE. Make ship happen. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. We talk about BetterHelp a lot on this show, and this month we are discussing some of the stigmas around mental health. 
I'm Gen X, and uh, I know from my generation, uh, a lot of people think therapy... I'm Gen X, so uh, maybe a little older than the target uh, demographic of this podcast, but I know that most people of my generation uh, were raised thinking that therapy was for so-called crazy people. But that's not true. Therapy doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. It means that you recognize that all humans have emotions and that we need to learn to control them, not avoid them, which uh, was not something that was taught to us widely back when I was younger. And we've been taught that mental health shouldn't be a part of normal life, but that's wrong too. We take care of our bodies with the gym, the doctor, and nutrition. We should be focusing on our minds just as much. I've been in therapy now uh, off and on for most of my adult life, but uh, for a solid clip the last uh, five or six years uh, though, and it has, uh, it has helped me transform myself. It's helped me overcome a lot of limitations that I've had, uh, helped me understand myself a little bit better, understand some of my impulses and urges, uh, know when to spot uh, the beginnings of unhealthy behavior patterns for me, and, uh, and be cognizant of that and be able to do something about it in the moment. It is, it is actually, it's, a, it's revolutionized my mental health. Uh, and and I can say that with a hundred percent honesty. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It is much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under forty-eight hours. Give it a try and see why more than two million people have used BetterHelp online therapy. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and Face listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash face. That's BetterHelp.com slash face. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash face. Speaking of things that, that like, just, I don't know what you're saying, you know, like okay. you just said, what a fucking, I'm, I'm having a bad day. I'm today? having a bad talk. No, not like actual bad. My uh, my communication is terrible today. Why? Horrendous. Why did you text me by the way yesterday saying jingle oh, no, jingle it's, jingle? Uh, we'll t- <laughs> does that, oh, does I jump the gun? I don't know what you're talking. I don't know what you're saying to me. I'll, I didn't. I'll tell I was. You about that later. I was scared to reply to it. I was like, <laughs> this is some sort of setup. I'm. Oh, I can only mess this up. No. I just ignored it. Well, people understand why in the future. Okay. I texted you jingle 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 because I was doing something and it related to the thing I was doing and I expected you to reply but then you didn't and the longer you didn't the more weird the text felt. I honestly I weird- read the text <laughs> and usually I, I'm at, I'm usually excited to see a text from you. It's like there are certain people in my contacts where if I get a text I'm excited. Jeff and Andrew both on those lists. You sent me jingle 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 and I was filled with dread. I was like, what does this oh, mean no, for me? I'm so sorry. I was like, uh-oh. I'm sorry. I'm, ge- I'm getting played somehow. I'm going to respond to this wrong. I just couldn't deal with it. I just no. had to stare at it and be like, oh, no. Without any... Yeah, I understand. If you would have replied in any way, I would have immediately explained out of panic anxiety of, I don't think... You know, what if he doesn't know what this is? Which you didn't. I definitely didn't. I woke up this morning thinking about my jingle, jingle, jingle text you. Being okay. like, like, I need to clarify this at some point. Um, it's now that time? No, that's later. Oh. That's a future. That's okay. a future. We'll, we'll let. We love mysteries this season. We'll let Jingle 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 be a mystery. Okay. Well, that, well. How far away? How far away is this? Is the solve to this mystery? Let's say two episodes from now. We'll talk. About oh jingle, my jingle, god! Jingle. All right. Three. Well, Gavin, we have ourselves a mystery. Okay. Let's put on our sleuthing hats and uh, and get our magnifying glasses. Gavin should be able to solve this. And let's solve, let's figure out what could Andrew possibly be talking about. Hmm. Hmm. What was the context around, what was the last conversation you had with him before, before the jingle, jingle, jingle? It could be a, a story about three Santas as they go around hacking various fast food <laughs> restaurants. I mean, it could be. I guess it could be. Is there any, I, what have you guys been doing together? Playing a lot of Halo, right? Is it, is, is could there You're be? Playing Halo. Any sort of a halo connection there? Uh, jingle, jingle. Hmm. Did you did you lose your keys recently? <laughs> no. Hmm. No. Had a door handle that almost exploded, but I don't think Andrew knows about it. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, had a door handle go bad. Yeah, let's what stop down. Mean? Let's take a break from the mystery and and get, what? Get well, into first this. of all, what did the bread clip say on it? When did it expire? That joke landed. 
That was a great <laughs> joke. Let's talk about how well that went. That was a fucking holy shit to that bomb. <laughs> Everybody's dead. That just <laughs> fucking horrendous. <laughs> Don't edit out that silence, Nick. Just leave that in. Oh my god. <laughs> Devastating. I was excited about that one too. I thought that was good. Why were you excited about that? I th- I was I was like, hey, we're tying it into the bread clip. I thought it yeah, was let's a funny get a joke. Full, let's get a full mental process on that. I, I mean, I thought you were. I like the throwback. Yeah, I thought it was a good throwback. Bread clips have been talked about recently. I thought it was a good throwback. I was excited about it, and it was a nothing. Let's well, let's you know, let's not assume it's nothing. Uh, Gavin, did a bread clip have anything to do with your door handle exploding? No, and I it don't. Hmm. Mm, no, not as far as I'm aware. Hmm. Well, that's too bad. I, I, well, I will say, Andrew. I'm trying to help you out there, uh, Andrew. Ec- Sorry. Excellent oh, recovery, so because your reaction to your joke was, I thought, hilarious. <laughs> oh, for sure. Oh, it was, well, there's nothing. It was just, I thought you could have told me that I dropped from the call. It was so silent. <laughs> I, it, was a, it was as if I had downloaded the law again, the level of just not being able to, but I hadn't. So I had to live with it. But I want to know about your door knob exploding. Um, Anything to put him further away from that joke. <laughs> Let's just keep <laughs> driving away from the bomb site. Just keep going. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a big handle guy. Uh, not a knob guy when it comes to doors. Oh, and I have a major man. issue with my cat uh, getting into the bedroom at night. You know, we can attempt to lock the door from the inside, but he just twats the handle over and over and over again. And eventually he gets in because he can open the doors. So I thought, we need a handle that only humans can use. So I got a fingerprint scanning handle. Um, Eric says that's a knob. I don't want the knob, Eric. I don't like the feel it is of a knob. a knob. It is a knob. Yeah. What do you knob- mean? How much of your life do you spend with a knob in your hand? Man, it's like less than two seconds. Yes. To me, there's so, there's so much satisfaction lost in a doorknob that you, you just lose all of the satisfaction from the handle. What? Am I am Kevin, I alone on this? Kevin has yes. no knob feel. Not a fan. The of a, the action with turning a knob and the action of turning a handle are the same. It's just your hand is in a slightly different position. There's just a more positive <laughs> feel feedback. There's like a nice haptic feedback from a handle that I think a knob <laughs> is lost on you. A knob. You don't always know when you're at the end of the knob reach, and then eventually your hand has to slide where the knob stops. And it, I hate, I don't like that feeling. A handle ends. You know, a handle pull <laughs> has a, a hard stop on it, but your hand doesn't keep going. I, anyway, I got, cheap, to... I got a cheap piece of shit, $35 fingerprint reading doorknob. And uh, that was my first mistake. I probably should have gone for, <laughs> for one that was more expensive. And I don't want to use the fingerprint part of it. I just want it to, you know, read any fingerprint because I don't think Smee knows about the fingerprint part. I don't think he knows <laughs> to sort of touch his little beans against the fingerprint reader. So he just hits the handle and it doesn't go because he hasn't touched the capacitive part. And uh, it, it took four AAA batteries. And I think when, <laughs> when I was installing it, I may have sort of kinked a wire or done something when I was putting the cover back on to the point where I was testing out the handle. I was like, oh, this... Seems to work pretty well. Smi can't open it. I can open it. Anyone can open it. That's great. But then I started to smell something. And then I realized on the inside of the, the room, the handle was insanely hot to the point where it's like, I couldn't even touch it for more than three seconds. I was like, oh, it's burning me. And then I saw the little cover start to bulge. And I was getting really worried because I'd already put away my screwdriver and stuff, but I was freaking out. Ended up running to my garage to get my tools because i thought the door handle was going to explode i made it i mean i made it back in time i got the thing off it was like burning me it was like shit was melting inside it was starting to stink i just flung the batteries out because they'd all started to sort of angle outwards i think there was some sort of piece of the board that was like a capacitor or something that was about to pop or something like that but uh, it was just really a continuation of my bedroom problems that I don't think most people have, you know, with like the exploding Apple remote, the, the ripped sheets, <laughs> the okay. uh, exploding no, no, no. door handle. But I, no. a, a little part of me thought I should have just waited to see if the, <laughs> the door handle exploded. But I just didn't want to burn the room down because I'm sort of still in that phase of I want to be careful in this room yeah. because shit keeps going wrong in it. Okay. Did you, did you check the reviews to see if anybody mentioned spontaneous combustion? 
Uh, I'll be honest, it was a pretty poorly reviewed door handle. <laughs> we, can't, we cannot, like, get... Mm, you cannot get away with the statement you just made. Yeah. You're like, I've been having bad luck in that room. Doorknob almost exploded. The exploding Apple remote. You broke the Apple remote. You snapped that in half. You decide you made that decision. They're not the same thing. Andrew, it's all my fault. I can't be blaming any of these things. I decided to do all of these things. Well, maybe. I mean, the sheet was an accident. I wasn't trying to break that. But it was all me doing it. Didn't you break your bed in a different way that you didn't, you think you didn't mention on the show? Is that a thing? Did I make that up? Uh... Are you are you thinking of you, Andrew? No, I'm not thinking of me. My bed is fine. I have a bed frame on my patio still, but <laughs> outside of that, every, everything's good. What? What? How did my bed break? You, you might be right. I don't know. I think you said that you it broke a second time or something else happened to it. But I guess I'm wrong. I guess I made that up for some reason. That's something that you don't remember. I don't remember. Jingle, jingle, jingle. I swear to God, if we're playing Halo later and you're like, hey. <laughs> Oh, I just remembered the bed thing. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> we will not. It will, definitively, we will not all be here in eight years. You will be dead. I just need to stop messing with stuff. I'm going to text you at like 11 o'clock tonight and go, oh, I just got that bread clip joke. Really funny. <laughs> what's, up, what's up, Eric? Oh, yeah. Do you have a knob now? Uh, honestly, I still think the exploding handle is better than the knob. You're insane. Shut Why? up. Are you serious? <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. What? <laughs> what are you talking about? You're out of your mind. You're, You're going to burn your, mind. your house down. Uh, I mean, Four I th- AAA batteries are going to burn your fucking house down because you have a cat. Well, he's, he's certainly not using the battery part now, right? Like, it's just, just you have a knob that doesn't have a thing. You just have a knob. For I, no rearranged, I rearranged the wire. And I packed in. Oh, you're fucking. You're a fucking lunatic. I think it was an error with one of the batteries. Oh, you are an insane person. I packed in four new ones, monitored it, and I have, you know, fingers <laughs> crossed, a relatively cool fingerprint doorknob handle shit that works. And I think I think I'm gonna keep it for now because I still think that's better than a knob. Between Jeff's bikes and your doorknob, batteries are just a no go for this show. Yeah. Can't enjoy batteries. They will always explode. They're dangerous. They are dangerous. I do. I don't know if we talked about it, but I really appreciate it, Jeff, that your your bike essentially kept exploding every time <laughs> you'd ride it and that you had multiple times of like after the first time it exploded, you didn't give up. You're like, we'll give it another go. I made another fix. Hopefully it won't explode this time. Process of elimination. You got to try all the different uh, permutations until you, fig- until you narrow it down to, to what the real problem is. So is every single person in disagreement about the knobs before we move on? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You're 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 in the wrong here. A hundred percent. Okay, so what if you have no? You got stuff. You got something in both hands. What? You need to use an elbow to open the door. You're you're shit out of luck with a knob. Gavin, not only are you wrong <laughs> about this, you are so wrong that it makes my McDonald's take look even more right. Because <laughs> if you disagree with that being hacked, Nick said he likes handles. Handles are great, but I I don't I'm not pat like I don't I've never considered nobody hates handles. <laughs> this isn't an anti handle thing. Yeah, nobody's anti handle here, man. I think it was a pretty pro-handle podcast. We're also just pro-doorknob and pro-common sense. Hmm. Well, I mean, what would your solution be? Just go with a knob? Deal with it? Yeah! Okay. Go with a knob! Is it weird if all of my doors have handles and one's got a knob? Is that weird? <laughs> yes. Yes, that is weird. Do all- Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to redo the whole house. Right, but also your house burning down because of one knob is also weird if you think about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We really should right. have saw it coming after it You're nearly right. exploded the first time. <laughs> <laughs> so, wait a minute. So, you installed this handle recently. Before that, it was a knob? No, before, no, that, no, was before that was a handle. So, your whole house has been handles this whole time. When you moved in, was it all handles? Or did you move in and go, oh, look at these fucking knobs. I'm not about it. Let's get this fixed. Uh, yeah, it was handles to begin with. Handles to begin with. You got a handle house. That's interesting. Apart from a few pocket doors. Yeah. Huh. I wonder if, because you have a, a newer home, I wonder if knobs are on the way out. I wonder if handles are, are like the new, the new hotness. That's an interesting question. No, I think it's Because my house is very taste. old. My house is very, very old. But it's all, it's all knobs. It's Knob City. What about you, Andrew? I don't, I don't know if I've ever lived in a house that was knob-centric. I'd say majority handle. Uh, Eric says think. no. Handles are for office buildings. Knobs are for homes. I've always thought handles were default, I've... and knobs are for like apartments. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. 
I'm trying to think about. I feel, like, I feel like knobs are better suited for like other people entering a room. Like, there's more like keys in knobs. Wasn't the whole basis for when we were selling bat knobs? Didn't you want that to be a knob? Is that the only time you've ever fought for a knob? You've advocated for the knob. Well, a bat, a bat with a door handle at the end would be a bit weird, don't you think? Well, no, I feel like you wanted it to be like a knob, like you wanted it to be a cabinet knob, essentially, was what you <laughs> yeah. described. That's the well, point cabinets, you cabinets can be, you don't have cabinet Wait handles. Wait a second. We can't go back to this. We cannot, <laughs> That that's in a different season. We can't go back to the knob <laughs> conversation, please. We can't. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we can. I think if you're gonna do this, you gotta you gotta be a fucking man about it, and you gotta get rid of every knob in your house. Which means you can't have a knob on any of your cabinetry in your bathroom, your kitchen, anywhere. You have to handle all of your kitchen counter or cabinets, uh, you, the the fucking under your sink. That's all gotta be handles. If doorknobs were like our bat knobs, a little bit more ergonomic for the hand, I I think I'd be into it. I just don't like grabbing a sphere. It's not very satisfying to me. Now I do like grabbing a sphere. I find spheres to be incredibly... Like, a sphere is what you want to throw. You want to put your hand around... It feels good to hold a baseball. A sphere is great when held from underneath, but you don't grab a doorknob from the bottom. I... Hmm. I can't follow that line of thinking. I don't even know what to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> what if your doorknobs were baseballs? <laughs> what about that? Would you be okay with a knob in that I'd be scenario? fine with that because the grip would be excellent. It's the slip at the end of the doorbell of... Oh, God! The door... <laughs> I really do wish I'd never started talking. <laughs> yeah, isn't it terrible? <laughs> hey, at least we're listening to you. Speaking is always a mistake. <sighs> um, <laughs> I have realized... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't even know how to phrase this. <laughs> Talking. I'm having a bad talk day. I got so excited. I woke up and I saw that the, the company that made Garfield Kart 2, Furious Racing, announced that three more Garfield games will be coming out over the next few years. This is the Italian company? This is, I think they're French. They're microids oh, is their name. And I was so excited that I was like, I need to, I need to retweet this. I need to quote tweet this. And so I, first I just retweeted it by mistake without putting anything there. <laughs> then I, here, I'll, <laughs> I'll post it. I'll post it in the Discord so you can read it, Gavin. Then you can see what I did when I followed it up with. I made, I made a quick adjustment. I'm like, no, nope, can't, can't read that. You can read, <laughs> read what I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> Beings. My dynasty beings <laughs> was my second <laughs> attempt. And I felt I like that you replied to it. You left it and replied. I did. Beings, I suck. Because <laughs> I felt like you can't retry three times. So I'm now stuck with beings, but I have to, much like my great bread clip joke. That was today as well. We're having a bad words day. <gasps> that looks wow. great. Jeff just posted a photo of a door that has two baseballs as the knob. That looks awesome. That's got to be. We've got to all three of us do our offices like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, yes, I support this. Oh, looks like those are Atlanta Braves baseballs. We need. Well, OK, we is it what version of Zimmer? It's Cubs, right? For what? For the, the like, if we're getting baseballs, I feel like they obviously. The boys of Zimmer was Cubs era. Yeah. So we got to get Zimmer signed balls. No, I'm saying we have to get Cubs balls if they're, if okay. they're Braves, like if we're, uh, we're see, clearly in line with Zimmer. Well, we may, we're making f uh, f face baseballs, so because I got to hit them all. We are. That's true. I can't wait for that. It's gonna be I, have a, I have a Ken Griffey Jr. ball I could use for my handle. Yeah? There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you have that? Uh, I just did a video with him and he signed it. Oh, that's nice. He's a nice guy. Is he? Have you so met Ken say. Griffey Jr.? I have never met him, but they say uh, oh, he's just lovely. <laughs> they say. That's so exciting. Just, uh, well, everything I've read is that he's just like, he's just a, a, a delightful person. But I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Gavin, what'd you, what was your experience working with Ken Griffey Jr.? The man who, by the way, to this day, I think, probably had the most natural swing in the history of baseball. Just a beautiful swing. I'm sure Gavin would agree. Sweetest swing in baseball. Eh? Eric Sweet Griffey. swing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just got Kenny competition. Swing. Griffey Jr. That's a... Ken Griffey, oh, where would the nickname go for a Ken Griffey Jr.? I feel like it's tough to have the mid, like the nickname in the middle when you have three names or when you have a junior on it. Do you know what his nickname was, Gavin? No, I don't even. No, know. what was his name? 
Well, he had two. Uh, I, I remember him being referred to as the kid a lot, but they also called him Junior because his dad, Ken Griffey Sr., also played baseball. So huh. uh, his nickname was the kid or Junior. And until injuries, he was uh, probably going to go down as one of the greatest players of all time. I mean, I guess maybe he still has. but Yeah, I mean, having never really seen a baseball game, <laughs> uh, I didn't know of his career. But I knew the name. Did you ask him about the staple? Didn't ask him about the staple. Honestly, I didn't really want to ask him about anything that he'd done because I just didn't want to embarrass myself in front of him. Yeah, yeah, sure. I, I, I feel like if I was Andrew, I'd have sent him an email before he showed up saying, I don't like your uh, games of baseball. No, <laughs> just just so we're on the, on the record. I don't like the Seattle Mariners and I never have. Anyway, it's nice to meet you. <laughs> but yeah, it was nice. He'd, he'd, he was injured, actually, when we... Uh, I felt like he was in pain while we were filming with him. He'd hurt his foot. That would describe most of his career, unfortunately. <laughs> he was a trooper and uh, he, he slammed some balls. And uh, the balls that he missed or he didn't go for, Dan caught and one of them broke his finger. So great. Dan partially holds Ken Griffey Jr. responsible for his broken finger. So Tony yes. Hawk broke his wrist and Ken Griffey Jr. broke his <laughs> finger. Yeah, <laughs> yeah indirectly, oh, I'd I say yes. It. Oh, man. Uh, we're getting the, the rap sign from Eric. Um, I do feel like, though, we should mention at this point uh, that I believe the Tiki toilets are out. They're out. Ooh. Yeah, Yesterday. We should, we should mention I that. I think. Depending. I, I, think this, I think this is tomorrow for when you hear this. <laughs> it's very exciting. <laughs> I can't speak today. I'm rattled. <laughs> I've been stunned. What are you... Yesterday they came out. That they came out on the first of February. That but is, but it's yesterday. not that day for us. I've noticed that there's there's six people on this Discord. We have um we have Nick, Eric, and Cat. What if the three of us just sub out and they can do the next one? I don't think that's part of Cat's internship plan to take over <laughs> an established podcast. I don't think it could be that much worse than the yeah, three I, of us I, trying to talk again. <laughs> the bar is low. Could be I'm just glad that we don't hate each other by the end of this one. And I'm very excited. Let me let me properly s not sell but oh, talk boy. about the porta potty. I bought one. <laughs> I think <laughs> You alright? <laughs> no, I'm not. No, I'm not. I bought one a year ago. On February 1st. It's a year. They come out on the same on the anniversary <laughs> of when I bought them. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> which is which is uh kind of cool that it's coming out on the anniversary but also just goes to show you how difficult supply chain issues are right now we tried to buy that much like the much like the fuck stick which we bought and ordered in a fucking break show which is by the way no longer on order we're still working it out we've had suffered some some fuck stick setbacks uh, it took oh, no. a year. It took a year for us <laughs> yeah. to get these these porta potty tiki. I just made. lost his shit. There were quality control <laughs> issues <laughs> with like, the first couple suppliers, <laughs> and then the supply chain. And now, a full <laughs> year later, <laughs> we have <laughs> pink best. porta potty tiki mugs. And I would certainly <laughs> appreciate it if you are in the market for a tiki mug. I would certainly appreciate it if you would buy them. Because for some reason, they bought a thousand of them. They are awesome. They look really cool. I lost it because Gavin had the least genuine oh I've ever heard. <laughs> when, I was, when I was like, I bought him a year ago. You're like, oh, like, you didn't give a fuck at all. And then <laughs> so I wouldn't be accepting judgment on my O's. No I think I was actually intrigued. No, there was zero intrigue in that O. And then while Jeff was talking, you're like, whoa. <laughs> and equally completely think that's why I lost it. It's two of the least genuine sounding statements I've ever heard. I've never heard anyone clearly not listening more. No Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. What do you want from me? What do you want from me? I don't listen. know what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> I sound even slightly interested. I even like 10% interested. <laughs> Negative. Hey, I Gavin. Think what it is, no, I think what it is is that in my head, I, you were you were playing it up like <gasps> like you maybe bought another porta potty, and when you said it was just a year since you bought the old one, I was like, oh, I don't I think I was not. disappointed. I was just was expecting something different. Oh, no, go back and listen to that. Can you give us oh about 10% enthusiasm, Gavis, and try to sell us on these tiki 
<laughs> tiki mugs we oh. bought, these porta potty, the tiki toilets. I could try and give the O again, like do a second take. Okay, please, I'll do please do. <laughs> give me give me a second. All right, you want to set me up? So I bought these porta potties a year ago to the date when they they're going up to be sold. And uh, you're gonna be able to buy your own porta pot. Like I bought, but it's cheaper, and yours actually. Are you gonna them. stop talking so I can say oh? <laughs> Neo Wait, talk, you said the O oh while I was talking last time. Oh. What do you mean? Sorry, I forgot what I delivered it. Why you? <laughs> why, why make me do it again? It's just a never-ending torrent. I was waiting for you to what be done. What are you talking about? I don't about? know. Interrupt. You always interrupt. All right, that sorry. Was the one right. time. Go again. Go again. Okay. I bought a porta potty oh! a year ago. <laughs> oh my god! Jesus! That was pretty good. Like and subscribe. Oh, no. Buy a tiki mug. <laughs> Please buy them. Also, nobody bought the Vancouver Child Kicker skateboards. Clearly, you guys don't want to skate. That's fine. But uh, <laughs> if you if you do find yourself in need of a skateboard deck, uh, we we're sitting on a mountain of them. <laughs> I I haven't been sent one. <sighs> well, we got extras. Well, I want I want the pro I want it. <sighs> go ahead. No, was that, was that our first guy pick? who never interrupts. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Just fucking walk all over me. What are you saying? I'll pause. You. Go <laughs> ahead. No, no, no. You got the floor, friend. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> we need to do two of these. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like a good place to end it. Bye. Hey there, it's Minor League Fan Jack here with a look at next week's episode of Face. It's a triple start. Jeff is royalty. Andrew is either going to cheat or lose. Gavin brings up friends again. The boys discuss pizza consumption. And once again, Andrew does not eat the pencil. All that and more on next week's episode of Face. <laughs>